readings taken from Romans 12, verses 1 to 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to the presence of your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the new by the renewing of your mind, that you may be discerned what, what is the will of God, what is the good, acceptable, and perfect. For by the giving grace to me, I say, everyone among you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but do you think of so which we should think, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have members, and do not, and not all members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ. Individually, we are members of one another. We have given gifts that make us think of our bodies to the grace given to us given to us prophecy, proportion to faith, ministry and ministry, teacher and teaching, the extortion and extortion, the giver and gen generosity, the giver and diligence, compassionate and cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, is it the same with you? 
you know, mature more like mine. And should I be in the supermarket and say, do you know what I mean? I'm packing shop. That's my daughter. That's Kate. She's the picker off the telly. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, my mum's the same. My son's a doctor. He's a doctor. And um, and to be saying, he um, said, you know, if you go to somewhere and people say, you know, what do you do? If you want to know who you are. And Kate says, you say you're a picker, and people always then say to you, oh, I'm not really religious, but, and then they tell you all about the last time they went to church, and, or their auntie's funeral, or something like that. And she said to Amir, is it the same with you? Do people always like, you know, say you're a doctor, oh, can, can I just show you this rash or something? <laughs> and he said, yeah, and he was telling this story where he was in a garden centre, and this man went, you're a doctor off the telly, aren't you? I proceeded to drop his trousers and show him a rash. <laughs> and the, um, I mean, the lady that was working there said, this is a family garden centre, you need to pull your trousers up, sir. <laughs> and and I mean, the car said, I, I know exactly what it is, but I'm not going to tell you the answer until you pull your trousers up. And so who we are, very much, is a big question, isn't it? And it's that big question about Jesus this morning. And one of the ways that we know who he is is by the titles that we use for him. Um, just having an interesting conversation with Janet after the last service, because when Janet and Sean pray for somebody to come to know God, they pray in different ways. You know, one, one will pray for one title, one will pray for another. So they've got to talking and thinking. One of the titles we use for Jesus is teacher. Um, and teachers in the church are those who have that gift to communicate, communicate the message of Jesus, of the understanding of what the Gospels are about, to stir us up, to make us think about and enlarge our vision about Jesus. And that's a title of respect. We call Jesus prophet. The Muslims acknowledge him as a prophet, not as the son of God, but as a very influential prophet. And that's a title of great honour and given to those people through time, those great prophets that we talk about and we preach about, um, that tell us something about God and what God's nature is and the messages that God is giving to us. They teach us about what God wants us to do and how he works in the world and the consequences of not listening to those messages think about the great prophets in the Old Testament. The Son of Man is one that we often use, and that's one that shows us about our intimate relationship with God. And that Jesus, you know, part of the Trinity, isn't it? That the Son knows the Father's will and takes God's place and the responsibility for the creation that God has made and the care and the nurture of our world. And then the one that we're probably most familiar with is Messiah, a title of awe, one that we give to the one who exercises the authority of God, who has God's authority to act for him in this world for us. And the, the Messiah is the one who we bow before, the one who is the anointed God, chosen and empowered to reveal God's will to us and to show God's authority over evil and death. So after teaching the disciples for several years, Jesus turns around to them and he says, who do you say that I am? Now, I, I bet the disciples kind of freaked out a little bit at that. I think I would have done in their position. Very challenging, very direct. And the sort of question that um, the bishop asks you when you're on interview for a vicar job and you're like, you know, who do you say that Jesus is? I throw that at some of my ordination candidates that I'm seeing as a vocations advisor. And they go pale. And they go, oh, 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 because it's not an easy question. And that's a question that we need to think about too. It's a question that Jesus wonders what our response is. It's a fundamental question of our Christian faith. Who do you say that I am? And it's not an easy one to answer. If you think of Jesus as a teacher, then are you actually ready to obey the teachings that he gives? A 
and the guidance that he gives in the Bible of how to live your best Christian life. If you call him prophet, are you ready to share the vision and to do his will for our church? If you think of him as son of man, will you acknowledge him as fully human but also fully God and the one who has God's power? If you call him Messiah, are you ready to honour his revelation of God? And if you call him son of the living God, are you ready to worship him as your Lord and God and accept Jesus as your personal saviour? Those teachings and examples of Jesus call into question everything about our lives in the world, how we ought to live our lives, how we ought to live out our faith, how we should engage with others around us. That's why we shouldn't panic about that question or answer it too quickly or with too much certainty, but we should reflect on it, we should take it seriously. Um, we ought to remember that it's a question that actually, it's not an exam answer, it's a question that we live out in our lives. And it's, the answer to it will change, won't it, as our faith grows and our faith changes. And so this morning, I want to throw some questions at you, probably as hard-hitting as the disciples had, that might make me something, ooh, ooh, but don't worry, we're not asking for answers. Just want you to go away and think and pray. Who do you say that Jesus is in your life? And do you really believe what we say about him? And if you do, does your life reflect what we say about him in the way that you live it? And does he make such a difference to your life that you want to tell others all about him, about who he is? what he means to you and how he transforms you. Ask the 
that it might always provide a solid foundation on which we, which we can stand. We pray for Christians who pay a heavy price for their faith, who face daily hostility from government, employers and neighbours. We pray for the Church of the Branchwine Link Committee in Blackburn Diocese. And in the Free State, we pray for the, for the cathedral staff and members of staff at the diocesan office. In the Anglican site of prayer, we remember the province of Southeast Asia. For Vision 2026, we pray for children and young people that they would have the strength to identify their gifts and recognise God's calling on their lives, allowing them to passionately serve and lead others. And for all parish clergy and those who hold office within each parish, that they would have the strength, imagination and wisdom to enable each community to know it is prayed for, cared for and loved. We pray for the parish of Ashton on Riddle, St Michael of all angels. And in our own parish we remember those who can't be with us this morning, especially those young people who would be in children's corner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for Elizabeth our Queen and all who serve in government, asking that they serve with humility and wisdom for the good of all, especially in these very difficult times. We pray for governments around the world, that they work for peace and that they can work together against the coronavirus. We pray for those who live in fear and who seek safe refuge in different countries, that they are dealt with justly and compassionately. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all young people who are still waiting for BTEC results and those who have received GCSE results. We remember those who are still in confusion over A-level results in university places. We ask that you bring order out of what appears chaos and give all students peace of mind at this time and for their future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our community, for those living in Wormsley Brown and at Weaver's Cop. We pray for all businesses in our community, that they start to thrive and grow and that the effects of the virus are not all missed. We think of those facing redundancy, whose future is uncertain, and ask you give them peace and meet their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Lord, we pray for the ill, the lonely, the distressed. We ask for healing and wholeness in their lives. Help us bring love, joy and hope to those who live in despair and those who are suffering in any way. We pray for those of our friends and family in nursing homes. Lucy Bolton, Iris Dixon, Jean Douglas, Rennie Lisby, Marjorie Talbot, Gary Mary and Albert Poole. And we pray for those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Anita Allman, Joan Benson, Margaret Blair, Denise Evans, Lauren Hall, Joni Hilton, Elsie Holt, Kerry Love, Megan Mason Bird, Reverend Christopher Park, Paul Clayton. And in a moment of quiet, we bring to God those who suffer, who are known to us personally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, thank you for the gift of eternal life. We remember Sarah Dobson, whose anniversary passing falls this week. Bring your comfort and peace to the families and friends of all who mourn loved ones in their sadness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, forgive us when we only turn to you when things trouble us and when we forget to thank you for your many blessings. Help us to recognise all the wonderful things in your world for which we should be grateful, and send us out in the coming week, ready to show our gratitude in all we do and say. Merciful Father, I send these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> 
God is love, and I was your living love, living God. And God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And God shall be here. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From sunrise to sunset this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people and falls to us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so, with cries of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sabbath in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sabbath in the highest. Lord, you are holy. Grounded by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, Gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Leonard, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, will honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as 
our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this body to share in the body of Christ.
Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, have celebrated that one true sacrifice which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace. By our communion, keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel and preserve us from all sin through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace.